There's a lot of speculation today about what the elections on Tuesday mean for national politics, for President Obama, and for the midterms next year. It was a good day for Republicans, but not necessarily a great day. Let's start with President Obama. The results in the gubernatorial elections in Virginia and in New Jersey were not good developments for the president. President Obama invested his personal capital in Virginia to a lesser extent, but New Jersey to a big deal. He campaigned extensively for uh, Governor Corzine, who lost. There are two things to watch out here. First of all, in terms of what President Obama is facing on the Hill, in terms of the bills he wants to get through, that gives him a little less clout in terms of trying to convince wavering Democrats to support him on tough votes. It means that when he goes to them and says, I need your vote, they're going to sit there and think, well, can he really help me if this is a tough election? And conversely, can he really hurt me? That's one thing. Um, the second thing that was kind of instructive here, and I think we have to be careful not to overinterpret from a local race like this, but we did not see evidence in these races of the big coalition that President Obama put together last year. First time voters, African American voters, young voters turning out for these two gubernatorial candidates. Now, maybe they shouldn't, right? This wasn't a big deal race. It certainly wasn't as interesting, but still, we've yet to see evidence that the coalition that President Obama put together last year can be put to use for anything else. The most revealing race might have been the smallest race, a race to fill a congressional vacancy in upstate New York. This turned into a pitched battle between conservatives and Republicans over what kind of candidate the party should be running and hence what kind of candidate the party needs to be embracing to get back into power. The Republican organization up there endorsed a candidate who was supportive of gay rights, supportive of abortion rights, supportive of the president's economic plans. Well, conservatives bucked at this and um, conservative leaders such as Sarah Palin came in and supported another candidate who was running on the conservative line. They poured money in there, they poured volunteers in there, they attacked the Republican candidate. It was really quite remarkable. Well, in the face of this, the Republican candidate backed out on Saturday in a shocking development. She just said, I'm not going to run, I'm not going to win. Uh, she suspended her campaign. On Tuesday night, late at night, the Democratic candidate, Bill Owens, won the race, became the first Democrat to represent that um, district in over 100 years. So what's interesting about that is that it's sort of a precursor of what I think the Republican Party is going to face now in terms of the debate of who is right, who controls the party, how much influence should the conservatives have in, in, in naming a nominee, how much should Republicans try to support a candidate who could appeal to more, to more voters, which is what they were trying to do up there. The big question to me is whether we'll see these same conservative groups, Club for Growth, Sarah Palin, begin to throw, run primaries against candidates who they think are insufficiently conservative. None of this is predictive in any way of what's going to happen next year in the midterms, but it certainly suggests some of the dynamics both parties are going to be facing as they prepare for the difficult races next year.